All right. I want to cover this example. Uh, as usual, I pretty much try to stick to uh, questions from the SOA that I don't like the solution to. Uh, in fact, this particular question, this is exactly how I approached it the very first time. Uh, it's potentially a little more work than what they do, but uh, in my opinion, it's much more intuitive. Um, here are the details given. Um, I did have to sort of, well, assume that you know something. Let me just go through it real quick. Let me just show you what I mean. Um, uh, X, I'm going to let the random variable X be the number of uh, policies that the actuary Raul examines until he finds a claim. And Y is going to be a similar statement, a similar random variable. It's the number of policies examined by Toby until he finds a claim. Uh, Raul actually examines low risk policies and Toby examines high risk policies. Now we're also told that the probability of uh, finding a low risk claim is 0.1, 1 tenth. And we're also given that the uh, probability of finding a high risk claim is 0.2, okay? And now something you need to know right off the bat is that these random variables both are distributed geometrically. You should absolutely know <clears throat> that there are two types of geometric random variables uh, for exam P specifically. One of them is the number of failures until uh, the first success. The other one is the number of trials until the first success. So you have to ask yourself, which one should this be? Uh, I claim that this is the number of trials because uh, we're, not examining, uh, we're not examining zero. And if you recall, if we're looking for the number of failures until the first success, we start our random variable at zero, zero through whatever. But I mean, we're examining policies, okay? So we start at one. That's one way to just see why uh, this is the number of trials until the first success, until the first claim. Okay, probably the claim, it, 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 that's my success, finding a claim. In a way, um, in practical life, it's not really success, right, if you're an insurance company, but that's how we're going to view it, right? All right, so these are, uh, that being said, this is the distribution uh, of x, okay? This is the probability mass function for x. This is just p times 1 minus p raised to uh, the x minus 1. This is typical uh, geometric probability mass function. This is the probability mass function describing y, probably success is 0.2, therefore the probability of failure is 0.8. Okay, these are the, uh, the values of the random variables, uh, 1 through infinity. And now I want you to answer the question. Now the question says, um, I want the probability that um, Raul examines fewer than Toby. Fewer than Toby. So right off the bat, right off the bat, this tells me to write down a particular statement. This tells me to write down uh, specifically this statement. We want to find the probability that the number of uh, policies examined by Raul, which are x, uh, is less than uh, the number of policies examined by the other guy, which is Toby. Okay, fewer, a uh, fewer, so strict inequality. Strict inequality, so this is what we have. What we need to find. So, uh, you can use some sort of convolution uh, method here, which is what I believe they do. Um, I don't. Again, I actually never really do it. To be honest, I never do it. I don't think it's necessary. I just think about things intuitively. This is the way uh, I want to do it. This is the way I did it before. It works. Um, so just tell me what you think. If, if you have a um, better way, by all means, I'm always happy to hear that. But hopefully, this is intuitive to you as well. Um, now we do have uh, independence, which means I could write my joint PMF as just the product. So that's what I'm pretty much gonna do. So um, we have that X is strictly less than Y, which means that this is equal to the sum, okay? It's actually gonna be a double sum. It's a double sum, okay? Because I'm not using the convolution method. I never do. Uh, X is less than or equal to Y, so we have this double sum. So now, uh, what's x going from? Just think of this as like a double integral. Literally, it's the same thing, same concept. x is less than y. That means x, uh, the smallest x can be is absolutely 1, and it's not equal to y. So it has to go up to y minus 1. All right. Uh, what is y going to go from? Uh, y is going to go from uh, y is equal to 1 uh, up to infinity. Okay? <coughs> so... Let's write down the joint PMF, right? Okay, so hopefully this makes sense so far. X is less than Y, and Y takes on any value. Y takes on any value. So 
this is what I have. Um, well, let's write down the, the, the PMF. It, it, they are independent, so I can write them as the product, the PMF joint. So this is 0 0.1 uh, times 0 0.9 to the x minus 1 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.8 to the y minus 1. All right. Now I'm going to just deal these individually. I'm going to do the inner sum first, just like you would do with a double integral. So uh, this is equal to uh, the sum from y equals 1 to infinity. Okay, leave this guy alone and uh, let's just bring the y's over here. Just leave those alone. Okay, 0 0.2, 0 0.8 to the y minus 1. Okay, now again, I want to evaluate this. I want to evaluate this. Now, if you just, hopefully you have some familiarity with this, but um, this is a finite sum, and it's geometric. I mean, this is a geometric distribution. That's why it has the name, the geometric sum. So it's a finite geometric sum, so you absolutely need to know the formula for that. Uh, if you want, I can make a video on it. It's really easy to prove why this is true. Um, all right, but why does this work? Uh, the way this works is I look at when uh, I plug in 1. When I plug in 1, I get 0 0.1. The very first term is 0 0.1. So this gives me, um, evaluating this, this is 0.1. 0 0.1 uh, times, times, uh, now uh, when I plug in the top term here, this is going to be 0.9 to the, when I plug in y minus 1 to x, this is y minus 2, and I only need to do one more than that. So 1 minus uh, 0 0.9 to the y minus 1 actually, divided by 1 minus the common ratio. The common ratio is 0.9, so this is 0 0.1. So these guys cancel, all right? These guys cancel. Uh, so hopefully you see uh, what I've done. Uh, this red here is exactly uh, this red here. So notice, gone and gone. All right, not too bad, not too bad. Um, now I'll evaluate this sum and I'll be done with it. So this is equal to, let's pull out this point two. You don't have to, but I'm just going to because I just want to, whatever. Pull the point two out, so 0 0.2 uh, times the sum from y equals one uh, to infinity, okay? Um, of this. Now I have this piece and I also have this one. So I'm going to, I'm going to distribute uh, this through here actually, right? So this is going to give me uh, 0 0.8 to the y minus one, distribute it to the one that gives me this, distribute it to the 0.9. Uh, they have the same exponent here. So I can bring it up uh, in the same, uh, <coughs> under the same power here. So what I mean is this is zero uh, minus, <coughs> they have the same power. So I can bring them under the same power together. So 0 0.8 times 0 0.9 uh, is 0 0.72 raised to the y minus one. All right, we just need to evaluate that and we're done. And hopefully <laughs> I don't run out of room. It looks like I'm going to quite annoying every single time I do this, right? Every single time. Let me just give myself a little more room. Y equals one to infinity of this business. This is 0 0.2. What happens if I evaluate this? I'm going to evaluate them individually. Uh, this guy right here, from 1 to infinity, this is just an infinite geometric sum. Common ratio is less than 1, so it absolutely converges. First term, when I plug in 1, is uh, 1. So this is times 1 over uh, 1 minus common ratio, so 0 0.2. Okay, Minus, I'll evaluate this one as well, uh, infinite common ratio is less than... Uh, one as well, so it converges. First term is also one, divided by the uh, one minus the common ratio, which is 0 0.28, okay? Distribute the 0.2, so this is equal to 0.2 times this business is one, distribute one point, uh, 0.2 times this is 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.28, and damn it, I need a calculator for this. I have my calculator over there in the window because it's charging. Uh, I use this one. And of course, it still doesn't work. This is what I'm using for exam P. I think it's the best one for exam P. I have the BA2 plus for exam FM, but I don't like that, that calculator so far. All right, so one minus 0.2 uh, divided by 0.28 is 0.2857. And hopefully this is the right answer. So this is, uh, 0 
Okay, so that's the probability uh, that actuary Raul um, looks at less policies than actuary Toby. And that makes sense because he's uh, looking at the low risk. So you would think that low risk, uh, you'd find a, 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 sorry, a claim later on, right? All right, tell me what you think. Um, leave a comment below, thoughts or comments. Uh, and thank you to my subscribers, I appreciate it.